This is my biogas plant. This is a part two of a video I did originally with home biogas, and I decided to build my own since I got a wolf dog and uh, I got a lot of extra meat. Originally, I was gonna have a 10,000 pounds extra every month, which is more than I need. I was gonna be uh, throwing it through a meat grinder and putting it in this system. However, I built it large. I ended up getting a local contract with a local butcher, so I don't need something that large. So I used this, but not nearly as much as I wanted to. I wanted to go into how I harvest the energy off from decaying meat and organic material and the process I do that's actually uh, upscaling the version I had before when I was just using it for my own personal use. I get meat from my local butcher in these 55 gallon drums. I have four of them. Um, he fills them up pretty high. And I take this and I put it in my freezer to freeze. And uh, then I transfer it to the fridge. And then once I have extra or a lot of the fat content, I put it through the meat grinder and feed it to the biogas system. This is a partially in-ground greenhouse. I actually dug an eight by eight by four foot hole in the ground. I put uh, ICB uh, containers on their side in there. They're about 250, 300 gallon totes. And I got about uh, four of them all together for a little over, quite a, quite a bit over a thousand gallons of uh, waste material storage. My system's pretty simple. Um, I, I got this plastic from Lowe's. Uh, this is one of the thickest grades that they do. My dogs have ripped this up numerous times when I let my wolf dog out so he's not allowed in the yard anymore um, unless he's monitored because uh, this is his favorite hobby to do is trash the greenhouse. So I haven't quite snipped off everything since I put the new one on. But I have four of these totes. I have an extra there and I have two up here and these hold the extra effluent waste. So I'll go over this really quickly. Um, these mainly stay warm from the ground and then you have this greenhouse that provides traditional supplemental heat from the sun. Even in the winter months, I'll be doubling up this plastic to make it a little warmer in here. I have them sitting on their side and I've painted them, spray painted them black so they absorb more heat. Uh, these are the inlets right here for every single one of them. I take all the meat, I grind it up, I put it in these uh, buckets here and I mix it with water to make a little bit of a slot, a slew, just a little bit of sloshy. And then I put funnels on the tops of these uh, that I currently don't have on there because they're soaking. And then I just pour the meat into there, the, the, the mixture, and it goes into these tanks and uh, dissolves. I will link an article below about the dissolving of fat-based um, slaughterhouse uh, systems. They've done experiments on this before. It uh, releases a lot of energy suddenly, but it takes a while to break down compared to organic waste. So a biogas system can handle that, uh, just handles it a lot differently. Uh, that's another topic for another time. Once everything goes in here, the overflow, all these are plumbed together and they go into this in-ground tote I have with a sump pump in there and you see that hose coming out of it and it goes up to these two. This one's full of water, this one's full of the fertilizer. I mix them together and I pump them out through my drip system once I have balanced uh, the pH of the solution to make it a nice uh, nutrient-rich fertilizer mix. As far as the gas side is concerned, I've popped holes in every single one of these and I have hoses coming out and they uh, centralize into one line. Let me pull up this plastic barrier. I designed a little scrubber that's hanging right there. That scrubber has a steel wool inside. It takes some of the sulfates out of the um, biogas, which makes it a little bit less stinky. This is the bladder that I use to buffer the system. After it leaves the scrubber, it goes through this pipe into this queen size air mattress that I actually got from Walmart. Just a couple bricks in there weighing it down. And as you can see, completely full of methane. So we are going to be emptying this out into pressurized cylinders. That basically goes into this compressor that I bought from Lowe's. I took the uh, filter off the side there and I plumbed in a brass fitting. So it basically only pumps in methane, compresses it, and it goes into these cylinder tanks up here um, that I've wired up. Not wired up, but rather plumbed up with a, quite a few extra fittings. Um, those are 200 gallons that I bought from Lowe's. And then these uh, quick connect pressure fittings here are full of gas that I use for methane generation with uh, converting to electricity with my generator, as well as a methane fireplace. Burning off some of the excess methane from my 
bio digester. I got a uh, water fire pit rigged up. I'm not gonna get into this too heavily now. I will make a separate video for this, but this is the generator I'm using and will be using more so for my biogas generation. They make snorkels you can buy. You basically start this with gasoline, um, you turn on the snorkel, turn off the gas, and then it runs on biogas. It's quite flammable. This will be powering my house and discounting some of my AC bill as well as running the fridge and freezer um, that house all the meat for my wolf dog. I'll be getting into some of the gas generation and the setup of this in a separate video so you can see how I convert the rotting meat and organics into usable electricity. Guys, I also wanna add a side note here that I have been very busy this summer with a wolf dog project and a lot of other things. This biogas system, I'm just basically getting set up where I'm gonna start tracking how much energy it produces, how much methane is generated based on how many pounds of meat I put into it, um, and be a little bit more intricate in a part two of this video. This video was just basically to show you our my general setup, how it works, um, nothing too in depth. I'll be doing a little bit more of an in-depth review later as I get a little bit more uh, data in that I can evaluate and show you what the cost efficiency of it is, etc. So just stay tuned for another video for that. And in the meantime, hope you guys have a good day.